when you get saved, what it does, it severs the, the strand or the tendency, as we said last week, it severs that tendency that came all the way from the sin of Adam, all the way from the Garden of Eden. When sin entered into the world, there was a tendency, a strand, a DNA of Satan that got into our lives and it was passed down from generation to generation. That's why you find generational curses that you hear in the Bible. The word says that if we disobey God and worship idols, do not his commandments, then it'll be passed down to the first, second, and third generation. That means that is it possible for you to be sitting here having problems with a generational problem or a curse? Yes, it is. But pastor, I thought when I got saved, I was set free. Yes, you were set free from that, but now comes the learning of how to stay free. God can set you free, but now you got to learn how to stay free. And that's where you mature in the word of God. And that's why the devil hates the worship of the word. Whenever the word or a place of word of the word. And, and you know, it's amazing. You can be exhausted on Wednesday, but Thursday, you've got so much excitement and, uh, and vitality to do something else. Isn't that amazing? Isn't the truth? It's true. Come on. I've been there. It is the honest. It is the gospel truth. Sunday, it's like, oh, okay. And, and you force yourself to go to church Sunday morning. But then Monday, you automatically jump up a little less encouraged, discouraged, excuse me. But you still go to work. Why? Because you know if you don't work, you'll not eat. But see, that's how the devil has that strand of DNA through us or that DNA, a strand with us trying to keep you from the word, trying to keep you from the word. It is the word that is going to prosper you. It is the word that's going to bring success to your life. It's the word that produces miracles. It's the word that the word that gets rid of the drought and brings in the refreshing power of God. It's the word I'm telling you. It's the word that brings life into our being. So, it is the word that we need. Now, notice what it says in 1 John, the first chapter, verse 5. And I'm just going to go over this real quickly. Verse 5. This then is the message which we heard of him, God, of God. And declare unto you that God is light and in him is no darkness. If we say that we have fellowship with him and walk in darkness, we lie and do not tell the truth. So in other words... We have to get real with ourselves right now. We got to get real. I mean, you know, if I'm living in darkness and I'm saying that I'm not living in darkness, then I'm lying. I'm deceiving myself, not, not anybody else but myself. I'm deceiving myself. So what do we do, Pastor, if, if we're walking in darkness? This is what he says. He says this. He says this. The Bible says... If we, but if we walk in the light as he is in the light, we have fellowship one with another and the blood of Jesus cleanses us from all sins. All sins does God cleanse us when we get into that word, which is the light, and we have fellowship with one another of the word. Now, now, now notice this. If you hide your sin, the blood can't clean it. You know what that tells me? If I hide my sin, I don't care how much I sing the blood song, it's not going to clean it because I'm hiding my sin. And the only way you can reveal that you've got that sin is by getting in that word. And that's what we do. When we come into the word, into the word, it reveals he is the light and in him is the light. And everything that is dark is revealed in us. Not in my neighbor, in me. When I get in the word, 
If there is a sin that I want to get rid of, and I'm not hiding no more, I'm declaring it, God, I want to get free from this, then in the Word, He'll show you how to break through from that sin that so bound us for years or bound you. And that's how you start breaking that DNA strand or that tendency. And it's nothing but the Word that's going to change it. Amen. So we have to realize that this is the only thing that will break it. Now, I want you to look at something in Mark, the fifth chapter. Now I'm going to go ahead and shift to this second part. Why was I born this way? And notice in Mark, the fifth chapter. Now, right now, I'm not saying, well, you know, I was born this way. That's why I am always going to be. I will not change. No, that's not true. You were born into a sinful world with a sinful nature, and it's going to take the word to break it. Now, Jesus Christ made us, made us a new creation, meaning by faith and by grace working in us, that we're saved by grace, but now comes the working out our salvation. In other words, I can't say, Jesus, forgive me, and then sleep around and think I'm going to heaven. Or Jesus, forgive me, and, and, and get involved in drugs or whatever it may be, and then think I'm going to go. No, I'm fooling myself. Now, the thing about this is, if, if I'm saved, then I remain saved, but I have to work on my life to get to heaven. Jesus saved me. Hey, man, if I was to die, the moment I got saved, if I was to die, I'm gone with the Lord. But now we're in this world. I've been saved 30-something years, 20, 28, 30-something years. Listen to this. Listen to this. That means... I had to start changing my life from that moment on. And I'm telling you, I'm still changing my life by the word. Amen. So it's, it's, it's a daily work. It's a daily work. In other words, you're working daily to become more like Christ. But you got to get in that word so that you can, so he can reveal the darkness that is keeping us from moving into that area. Can you say amen? And notice what it says in Mark, the fifth chapter. In fact, let me just go there quickly. Mark the fifth chapter. Hallelujah. Can you say amen? amen? Now notice what it says in Mark 5 verse, verse 1. And it came to pass in verse 1, Mark 5. And it came to pass as the people pressed upon him together, all together, to hear the word of God. He stood by the lake of Gennesaret. Do you see that? Well, wait, I'm, I'm in Luke. It sounds good, though. Yeah. Sounds good. In fact, it almost sounds like Luke. I mean, like Mark. Amen? Mark the what? Fifth chapter? 5-1. Yes. And they came over unto the other side of the sea, unto the city or the country of the Gadarenes. And when he was come out of the ship, immediately there met him out of the tombs, a man with an unclean spirit, he had his dwelling among the tombs, and no man could bind him, no, not with chains. Because that he had been often bound with feathers and chains, and the chains had been plucked asunder by him, and the fetters broken in pieces, neither could any man tame him. And always night and day he was in the mountains and in the tombs, crying and cutting himself with stones. Now let me ask you, does this, does this look like a creation of God? Come on, let's, let's all together. Uh, does this look like a creation of God? No, it doesn't. But nevertheless, this man has, has a soul. God loves him, but there's something wrong with him. Now, he got to the point where they had to bind him. And chains couldn't hold him. He got to the point where he had to cut himself. Do you know this is, this is animalistic? This is already animalistic. This is a man that God created. Now... God, God created him. Now he was full of sin. Sin led him to live animalistic into an a, 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 a outward society, away from the society. And he was literally killing himself. Amen? But notice what it says here. And when he saw Jesus afar off, he ran and worshipped him and cried with a loud voice. Now notice this. Notice this in verse 8. Notice this in verse 8. Jump down to verse 8. And he said unto him, Jesus said unto him, come out of this man, thou unclean spirit. Jesus cleaned him up, right? 
Jesus cleaned them up, right? Now look all the way to verse 15. Now there are a lot of things that happen in this, during this time, but, but I'm getting to some main points. Verse 15, and they came to Jesus to see him that was possessed with the devil and had legions sitting, sitting in clothes and in the right and in his right mind, and they were afraid. In other words, here is this man all together in his right mind. What got him from, to, from being full of devils, bind, bound and chained and cutting himself and living like an animal to a man that was in his right mind? What did it? It was Jesus Christ that broke that DNA, that generational curse, that strand, that, 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 that tendency to kill this man. It was Jesus. It was Jesus that broke it. Now let's, let's find out what happens to this man that's set free now. Now this is what happens to many of us. We're set free, but we get a little relaxed in freedom that we allow somehow that tendency that will try to destroy us to come back into our lives again. Amen. And notice what this man, notice what this man did now. It, all the way down. No, notice all the way. In ver, well, let's go ahead and read verse... Uh, um, in verse 19. How be it Jesus suffered him, the man that was, that was in bondage, how be it Jesus suffered him, but said unto him, Go home to thy friends, tell them how great things the Lord hath done for thee, and had compassion on thee. And Jesus departed, and began to publish in Decapolis how great things Jesus done for him and all men did marvel. Now notice the key here. He went immediately to do what Jesus said. And Jesus said, go tell your family. And notice this. Notice this. That means that word go. Look at that word go. 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 That word go is an action. Meaning from that moment on that you were set free, that this man was set free. He had to step into the trust of God, the obedience of God, and to do what God told him to do. And not only to do what God told him to do, but to publish and to declare what Jesus has done. Hallelujah. Amen. Now I want you to think about it. This man was in his right mind. This is the mind of the Lord. This is the mind of the Lord. The Lord wants you and me that when we have been set free to do the work that he wants us to do so that he can increase more of his mind in us. Hallelujah. Amen. You see how the devil works? The devil always tries to put you back into bondage after you have been set free. After you have been set free, the devil says, don't go. Sit. Don't say. Just be quiet. You see what I'm saying? And so the work that we have to see here is having the mind of the Lord to break all these tendencies, to break all these, this DNA factor, all these strands, these things that come against us. Amen. Now, first of all, the devil wanted him to be possessed out of his mind as a wild man. Now, let me tell you something. Do you see how the devil can take you where he can take you to and what he wants of you. He, he, the, the, the enemy doesn't love you. First of all, you're creation of Jesus. He doesn't love you. You're a creation of the Lord. And so Jesus comes into our heart, sets us free. We're free. Now it's our responsibility, ladies. Listen to what I'm saying. It's your responsibility, my responsibility to have the mind of the Lord. To do the, what the Lord tells us. Have the mind of the Lord. Not to think like the way we used to. Not to talk the way we used to. Not to behave the way we used to. See, all that is old and all that is gone and all that is stale and all that is ugly. It's ugly out there. Hallelujah. Amen. That means there is a demand that God is allowing us to enter into. And that is to get more of God. We, we need more of God, ladies and gentlemen. We need more of God. Hallelujah. Amen. So in other, in other words, what I saw here was there was a mindset. We have to renew our mind on a continually basis. You can't back down. I mean, I cannot stop from renewing my mind. Ladies and gentlemen, if you go throughout a day without renewing your mind, you're already at a stop 
stopping point. You have stopped. Amen. That means every day, just like you drink coffee, just like you eat a meal, just like you, you take care of your body, you ought to get into renewing your mind. Renew your mind with the Word of God. Renew your mind in prayer. Renew your mind speaking to the Lord. Renew your mind praying in the Holy Spirit. Renew your mind. I'm telling you. And recognize that this is what God has you to do, wants of you to do. Amen. See, when we go to our job, you're dealing with all kinds of issues of the world. You're dealing with demonic activity out there. And the only thing that you're going to come above or cause yourself to go above is by renewing your mind. Saying, you know what, Father? I've been in this grime all day long, but I'm getting the word. I'm going to pray in the Holy Ghost so I can get rid of all that mess. Why? Because, see, our mind is now being conditioned by the world. See, the devil doesn't want you to increase in the word. Oh, he'll say, you're saved. That's where we, that's where we hear a religion that says, one saved, always saved. Do you know that's one of the, that's one of the, that's a, that's a lie from the pit of hell. One saved, always saved. I hear people say, I'm saved, but they're living in sin. Well, I'm saved, brother, I'm saved, I'm saved. That's a lie of the devil. Amen. You see, because you're saved by faith and by grace, now comes the working that you and I have to do every day to renew our mind. To renew our mind. I would say that most of us sin today. And if we sin today, we know that we're not perfect yet. That means we have to renew ourselves. Get into the time in the presence of God and renew your lives. Hallelujah. Amen. Come on, church. We have to do this in order to move higher with thinking like Christ. Having the mind of the Lord. Hallelujah. Amen. Can you say, I want the mind of the Lord? And look at it. Second Timothy. I want the mind of the Lord. Go with me to 2 Timothy. Jesus is Lord. Hallelujah. Amen. I want the mind of the Lord. Jesus is Lord. 2 Timothy, the first chapter. Amen. Notice what it says in verse, in verse 7. I want you to see this. Verse 7. 2 Timothy 1, verse 7. For God hath not given us the spirit of fear. Now that word fear, in some translations, says cowardness. For, not, for God has not given us the spirit of cowardness or fear, but of power. That it is exousia, power, but of power and of love. And notice this, and, and. Do you notice this? He talks about power and of love, but then he says, and of a sound mind. Sound mind. That means he knows the enemy will work on your mind. Now, yeah, you know, you know, uh, he knows that, that the enemy will work on our mind, that our thinking process, the way we, 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 we think, the way we put things together. And that's where we have to always work with our mind. How do we renew our mind, Pastor? How do we become sound, Pastor? How do we become sound in this day? By renewing your mind by the word. The word of God. The Bible says that the word came and dwelt among us, and we be heaven is good. The word Jesus was manifested in flesh and came before us. Do you see? Do you see? Jesus is the word. So whenever you get into that Bible, you you see the, the workings of Jesus. You see the workings that He desires for you to have. In other words, He is the maker. And what you read in his word is the instruction manual. The instruction manual. In other words, if you never get into that word, you'll never be able, the word will never be able to instruct you how to live right. Now, I know of another instructor that's out there. I know an instructor that's out there that doesn't want you to have the manual, doesn't like the, make, the manufacturer, doesn't like the one that put it together, and much less cares about how you operate. He'll drive you crazy. He'll break you. He'll kill you. You see that? So it has to be the, the working of our mind in the Word, in everything that we do. The Word. I'm telling you, the Word, it works. It's powerful. It'll establish you. It'll settle you. It'll, I'm telling you, it'll rebuke you. It'll correct you. It'll put you in righteousness. Hallelujah. I love that, that about Jesus. Jesus will take care of you. It's like our Father that will just tell you, my son, you're going the wrong way. The Word tells you to do this. And I love that about the Word. Amen. Can you say amen? It's the word of God. Hallelujah. Amen. Let's look at another scripture. 
I want you to see something. Go with me all the way. Well, we're in 2 Timothy. Let's just stay there. Go to the third chapter. Hallelujah. 2 Timothy, the third chapter. Verse, um, verse 16. There it is right there. Thank you, Lord. All Scripture, 2 Timothy 3, 16, all Scripture is given by the inspiration of God and is profitable for doctrine. That word doctrine means for teaching. The Word of God is profitable to teach you. The Word of God also says for reproof. That word reproof means for rebuking, for correction, for instruction in righteousness, meaning in training to be righteous. So in other words, the Word of God does three things. The Word of God does three things when you get into that Word. First of all, and a lot of us don't like that word rebuke, but, but the Word of God just rebukes us, kind of just tells us that we just need to fix it, get it right. I love that about God, amen. He'll tell you. You know, the devil won't tell you to get it right. The Bible says, whom the Lord loves, he disciplines, he corrects. I love my children. When they were growing up, I would, I would discipline them. I would correct them. If I didn't love them, I'd say, just do what you want to do. Amen. So three things that we see that the Word of God does. Three things. Listen to what the Word of God does. Number one, it rebukes us. I love that about God. It rebukes us. Number two, it teaches us. Number three, oh, come on, church. Come on, church. It, 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 not only does it teach us, oh, my God, it gives us, it gives us instruction how to live before the Lord. Instruction how to live right before the Lord. Amen. Hallelujah. I love that about the Lord. Hallelujah. Amen. But you know what we got to do? We got to get into the Word. Go with me to Psalms 119. And I read that Sunday. Let's go ahead and look at it again. Psalm, Psalms 119. Hallelujah. Psalms 119, verse, verse 33. Praise God, praise God, praise God. Amen? Amen? The Bible says in Psalms 119, verse 133, Order my steps in thy word, and let not any iniquity have dominion over me. Remember that word iniquity is passed down from generation to generation. Let no generation that has been ungodly passed down to me see see you you if you if you and i are not in the word then we will never know how to break a generational curse off us and god will reveal it to you god will reveal you what something or something that you're carrying that seems like you can't break it he'll reveal it to you he'll say you know what you're carrying a generational curse that's come from a third generation back into your life you need by the word to declare it and i'm telling you what when god shows you things you start speaking and you start breaking it you see what i'm saying what does the word do what does the word do the word is breaking that dna or that strand or that tendency remember denim has a tendency to what fade right the only way to change from fading denim is to what? Take care of them even more. In some cases, not wash them much. But I'm talking about how do you stop a tendency? See, denim, denim is meant to fade. These pants that I have on, they're denim. But you know what? They've been fading. They've been fading. They've been fading. They've been fading. That's what the tendency tries to do from the time that Adam sinned to cause you to fade from the presence of God. See, the desire of the Satan, and let me tell you, Satan is long-suffering, really. He waits long. You're the, you and I don't have patience, but he waits. He's got a plan. He's got a plan. If they are in a tendency to fade from the presence of God, then I will be patient to work on them little by little, little by little, take the word away, take the worship from them, little by little, little by little, and you know what? Cause pain in that person's life. And generation and generation. Do you see? A lot of parents suffer because of the generation of their of their children. A lot of parents are suffering today because of their children. Why? Because see, it was a curse placed by Satan to destroy that individual by the generational curse. You see, but thank God that He allows us. Oh, come on, church. Thank God that He allows us. He allows us by the word to recognize, to recognize those things. And you know, I gave you an example about sugar diabetes in my life. Do you know something? If I did not know the word, I would have sugar diabetes today and I would be having problems with my pancreas today. No telling what would happen. 
But see, it was the word that said, by the stripes of Jesus, I'm healed. Jesus took my sickness, my disease. I don't need to have this blood this problem. That's a curse. And, and let me tell you something. What's, what really bothered me was when I went to, to the cemetery in San Jose, Texas. And they told me, this is your uncle, this is your uncle, this is your uncle, this is your uncle. And I said, how did they die by sugar diabetes? I said, oh, no, no, no. I went to Austin, to, to Pflugersville, to my father's uh, uh, side of his family. And in his side, they have aunts and uncles that all died by sugar diabetes. That told me something. This is real. This is a generational problem. The devil's trying to destroy, amen? And he's not gonna destroy my life. I'm breaking that tendency now. I'm breaking that DNA thing that came from sin now in Jesus' name. I'm telling you, there's a lot of Christians that says, well, you know what? Well, it's God's will for me to suffer. And he'll be in heaven or she'll be in heaven, but full of, the, full of sugar diabetes dying early. You see what I'm saying? So it's the word of God that allows us to shed light on that. I'm like, you know, I thank God for the word. I thank God for my pastors. I thank God for people that taught me the word to know that. No, it's not right. It's not right to have this type of sickness. It is not. It is not of God. So it was my responsibility to get in that word and to declare that word over my body to break forth from that disease. You see what I'm saying? It was me. It wasn't you. Lorenzo, you couldn't do it for me, although you can pray for me. But you know what? I, I can still destroy my body by doing all the wrong things. Amen. But it was a revelation. I thank God for the revelation of the word of God. Amen. Hallelujah. And notice this. Let's look at uh, Go with me to uh, Psalms 18. Let's go all over to Psalms 18. So was I born this way, Pastor? You were born into sin. And there has been a DNA released through life. And it is through Jesus Christ that will break that strand. But it is up to you to renew your mind constantly in the word of God. Constantly in the word of God. Amen. Psalms 18. Hallelujah. Amen. Psalms 18 verse 23. I was also upright before him and I kept myself from mine iniquity. Do you see that? I kept myself from my generational curse. Look at that again. I was also upright before him. And I kept myself from mine iniquity. In other words, you have to do the work of the Lord to break through from that generational curse. You got to do it. Amen. You got to do that. And don't you, and you know, that's why today, you know, today people say, well, this is the way I am. You know, a lot of lesbians say, well, this is the way I was born. A lot of these gays, this is the way I was born. No, no, no. The tendency is sin. Sin got you in this predicament and Jesus is the only one that can set you free but after you're set free you got to stay in the word you got to overcome this perversion you got to get your mind right and start believing God to heal your mind from loving other the opposite sex you see what I'm saying it's got to be you you have to do it you've got to declare it you want to quit smoking you've got to say father in Jesus name I'll break this generation curse I desire no longer cigarettes and you got to do it hallelujah amen you know there's a lot of bandages out there a lot of bandages out there. But listen, you've got to get to the point that you say, you know what? This is the line today. I'm breaking that. No, no. Why did I say cigarettes? Because I know many people, many people that tell me, Pastor, it's hard to break smoking. It's hard to break smoking. It's hard. Listen, you get in that word of God and you start speaking over your body. God will start showing you things in the word. First of all, you have a dream about your lungs. <laughs> Amen. And you will see your lungs. And you'll say, whoa, I've got to stop this. I'm telling you. If you ever saw what smoking does to lungs, I'm telling you, it, it completely it starts blocking every cell in there. And, and I'm telling you, it destroys. You know, we talk about anything, anything that will destroy you. Amen? And let's look at another scripture. Amen? Let's look at another scripture. Go with me to Galatians. Hallelujah. Say with me, hallelujah. Hallelujah. Amen. You want to lose weight? Get in the Word. Instead of trying to get into these diets. Amen? And it's not hard. I, I, I enjoy it. I enjoy chocolate. I do. I really, I love chocolate. But do you know what? I know when the Holy Ghost tells me don't eat chocolate. And I'll say, yes, sir. Everybody around me can eat chocolate. And I, I love it. I love it. I'll pick up my body and say, you smell that chocolate. You're not having any. Why? Because, see, the Lord knows how to take care of you. Amen. Amen. Now, go get Galatians. <laughs> 
the reason why I said the desire to pursue. Oh, Pastor, I've been trying to lose weight. And inside of me, the Spirit of the Lord says, say, quit eating that chocolate. Do you know that? I told my wife the other day, just, we were talking about what this, this particular thing that, that this person asked. And I said, you know, honey, really, I don't know why people make it so hard. Just eat, just, just slow down on eating, man. Don't eat bread. Bread turns into sugar. Stay, you know, stay away from bread. Stay away from the white powdery sugar. I'll tell you, all that's a stay away from sweet. Pastor, is it possible? Yes, you can. It's possible. I did it for five years straight without eating sugar. And it was fun. When I got back, when I ate an apple, it felt like I had all that sugar in there. I had a sugar rush. You see? Now I got off the wagon a little. But I enjoy a little ding dong every once in a while. You see what I'm saying? But see, we have to realize these things. Amen. Notice what it says in Galatians, the fifth chapter. Hallelujah. Amen. Are you with me? Verse 16. Galatians 5, 16. The Bible says this, this I say then, walk in the spirit, and you shall not fulfill the lust of the flesh. You see that? You see that lust of the flesh? That's the pressures that you have in life today. Now, the desires. And notice this, this I say, walk in the spirit. Pastor, how to walk in the spirit. Do you know you're spiritual? Do you know God made you spiritual? So therefore, learn how to live spiritual. Learn how to talk spiritual. Learn how to pray by the Spirit. You see, see, these are the things that we have to understand through the Word of God. Amen. Notice what it says in John. Go with me to John. Say with me, I'm spiritual. I'm spiritual. Amen. Look at John. John, the sixth chapter. Hallelujah. John 6, verse 63. It is the spirit that quickeneth. It is the spirit that quickeneth. The flesh profits nothing. You know, by you and I dictating to our flesh, telling your flesh, feeding your flesh junk, doing the things of the flesh, it profits nothing. The words that I speak unto you, they are spirit and they are life. Now, how many people rather live long and trust the Lord how to live and enjoy living long. I want that. You see what I'm saying? There is no gain for your pastor or your pa pastor Christine or any of us to live after the flesh. There's no gain in that. Do you know that? Do you know that there's no gain to you that I live in the flesh? There's no gain to you. Why? If I live in the flesh, then you'll not have the word from this house. I'm not saying that this is the only place you get the word. You get the word from a lot of places. But what I'm trying to tell you, it'll profit nothing. It'll, it'll profit you nothing, nothing, nothing. If I live in the flesh. If I live in the flesh and, and don't give you the word and, and just always live in the flesh, always live in the flesh, the dictates the flesh, dictates. Do you know what I'm saying? Do you know what I'm saying? You know, you know how when you go on vacation, uh, come on church, everybody goes on vacation. Have you ever noticed that when you come back from vacation, you're just dog tired? Monday, you're going to work, you got back from vacation, I'm tired. Why is it? Why is it your dog tired? Why is it you're exhausted? Because you've been catering to your flesh all week. You didn't do nothing in the spirit. Amen. But if you, on vacation, find time to get into the spirit, say, you know, today, I'm going to read the book of Corinthians. I'm on vacation. I'm going to pray in the Holy Ghost more. Oh, yeah, I'm going to enjoy some, some things out there, but I'm going to read a book. I'm going to read the spirit of God. I'm going to disturb myself. I'll tell you, Monday morning, you'll come back strong. Why? Because, see, your spirit profited. Your flesh didn't. Your flesh did not profit. Amen. It's getting real quiet out there. Hallelujah. Amen. Help me out, somebody. Help me out. Hallelujah. Amen. So in other words, we got to get in the spirit. Amen. Romans 8 chapter. That's a very, very quiet one. Amen. 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 There you go. Praise God. Romans the 12th chapter. Romans 12. Amen. I remember my pastor asked me, I need you to open the church up every morning at 5 o'clock so the people can come pray. Now, I remember the first day he told me that, I thought, there's no way I can ever do that. Why? First of all, he knew 
what I needed. He knew what I needed. But my flesh didn't like it. I mean, I'm telling you, uh, Monday morning, dear Lord, you know, we had church Sunday morning, Sunday night. And then Sunday night, we'd go out and to Denny's. We do that a lot until I got this appointment. Monday morning, getting up to go 5 o'clock to open up a church when there's nobody there and wait for people to come. Now, notice this. I did that the first day. It was hard. The second day, the third day, the, until I ended up doing it for five years. What did it do for me in five years? What did it do for me? Tell me. It literally broke my flesh. That means I had to go to bed early. Had to get up early. Couldn't do the things that I wanted to do late. Everybody else did things late. Not me. I'd go to bed at 9 o'clock so I can get up at 5. Five years the Lord did that to me in my life. Amen. Now the thing that the Lord was doing in me was showing me that the work does bring discipline in your life. The Lord does bring discipline. Amen. And now the thing about this is it, it, it's, it's an awesome thing to know that those five years helped me understand how to deal with my life. There are things that I had to break through off of my life. But now notice this. That's what God did in me. Now what is God telling you? What, you know, now I haven't told you, you know, uh, Brother Bobby, would you like to open up the church? You know, we, we have early morning prayer on Tuesdays here every morning, every Tuesday here. It's awesome. Now, now, what if God is telling you to do something that you've never done before that will cost your flesh and cost you to squirm, but yet God knows what he's doing? Are we willing to let God do these things in us? Are we? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I, you know what I'm saying. That are we allowing God? Will we allow God to do that in us? What has God told you to do that will break your flesh? What has God told you to do? All we have to do is just say, "Yes, sir, I'm going to do it. I'm going to do it. I'm going to do it," and stick with it till you get it broken off your life. Stay with it until there's brokenness. Hallelujah. Amen. Why? Because see. That's what the Spirit's doing. The Spirit knows how to take care of your body. The flesh doesn't. The flesh profits nothing. You know, if I were told my pastor, Pastor, I'm so sorry, but I won't be able to do that. First of all, I would be disobedient to my pastor. Second of all, to God. And then I would never live a life to know how to break through the flesh. Amen. See, we have to do these things in the spirit. I'm telling you, the only way you'll do it is by getting that word and letting the word show you what needs to be broken off you. Come on, church. Broken off you. Hallelujah. And then let God show you how to do it. Man, if he calls you to, to get up at 4 o'clock every morning and pray, well, then do it. Hallelujah. Do it. It'll benefit you. It'll benefit you. But, Pastor, I want to sleep. The sleep is messing you up. Well, Pastor, I just want to eat what I want to eat. Well, you, you may have a tendency to have a disease in the future. You don't know it. Amen? Now I'm meddling. Amen? <laughs> y'all got, y'all looking at me like, oh, Pastor, oh. Amen. All right, let's look at something. Go with me. Go with me to Romans. Romans, the 8th chapter. No, no, let's, 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 uh, let's look at the 12th chapter. Romans 12. All right? Remember, it's the mindset that God is dealing with. It's the mindset. It's the mindset. It's the mind. Verse 1, chapter 12. I beseech you, therefore, brethren, beseech you. Look at that word, beseech you. That word, beseech you, is a, a plea like coming to the knees or bowing at the knees. It's like God bowing to you tell you I know what's going to help you I beseech you I bow and beg you you brethren by the mercies of God that you present your bodies a living sacrifice wholly acceptable to God which is your reasonable service look at that word reasonable meaning very simple he's not asking you to do something hard you can do it you can do it you can do it and be not conformed verse 2 to this world don't be like this world 
but be ye transformed by the renewing of your mind. Renewing of your mind that you may know and prove what is the good and acceptable, perfect will of God. Do you know it's God's will for you to know that you know that you know that you know? Has anybody ever had a contemplation of making decisions? I know Brother Lorenzo this week had to make a lot of decisions. I know I have to make decisions some things. Has anybody ever had to make some decisions where you finally get to the point where you say, and it's a sad thing that we should never say it, but we say, I don't know what to do. Have you ever thought like that? Come on, church. This is yes. This is no. I mean, I mean, we, we, we've been there, right? We, we, uh, you get to the point where you say, God, I don't know what to do. I just don't know what to do. Do you know it's not God's will for you to, to get in that condition? You can see the moment... Now, now listen to what I'm saying. The moment that you get into a condition of not knowing what to do, then you lost confidence in the working of faith. Now, faith comes by what? Hearing and hearing the word of God. If you would have been built up in the spirit and in the word and the knowledge of God, then when these things of decision make it, you know without shadow doubt what to do. Why? Because you've conditioned yourself to hear the Lord. Amen. This, this helps me a lot. Whenever I don't, I really don't know what to do, I don't voice it. I'll pray in the Spirit. I'll never tell my wife, well, I just don't know now. I mean, the Holy Ghost got a hold of me one day and literally, I, I said, honey, I just don't know what to do. And the Holy Spirit, shame on you. Now, she didn't say, the Holy Spirit said, and I said, Lord, what did I do? Shame on you. And I said, oh, shakarabha. I started praying, Moshika, Brondosika, and I got in the Word, and then the Lord showed me in the Word that I should have known this, known this. Amen. It is the Word of the Lord that will help you in all conditions. Amen. All conditions, in every condition, every judgment, every righteous choice, Walking in discernment, walking in the knowledge of God, walking in understanding of God. Hallelujah. Amen. So he says, God is, Paul is saying, I I'm begging of you. Like I bow my knees to you and, and I'm begging, I'm, I'm begging, I'm begging, I'm begging you. Brother, to, to, by the mercies of God that you present your body as a sacrifice unto God. It's not hard, my brother. It's not hard that you just by your service unto the Lord. It's not hard what God tells you. Do it. It's not hard. Do it. If you, if you told God, I'll do it, then stick to it and stay with it until you finally believe that you can do it. Amen. In other words, in other words, we ought to be people that will stand on knowing God. That's why there's so much mess in the world. So many people are confused. They don't know. There's so much things going on. I'm telling you, you pray in the Holy Ghost, get in that word, and you'll see more of God. Amen. Pray in the Holy Ghost more. Pray in the Holy Ghost more. Amen. We learned a lesson this week. And it's not nobody's fault. It's my fault. I learned a lesson. Nobody's fault but mine. I gave away a dog that we had for, Jason told me, eight years. Seven years. Seven years. Now, this dog was an outside dog. Just let him in the house every once in a while. I always told this dog, kill it. And finally, we got rid of him. But then after it left, I felt so bad. I literally was sad. I was like, I had to pray in the Holy Ghost. I mean, literally pray. And she, my wife was like, honey, what's wrong? She shut up. It's like I, like I lost somebody. <laughs> I'm praying the Holy Ghost. Praying. And then finally, I got to the point, And I'm talking to God. I'm saying, God, take this pain from me. It hurts. I mean, Pastor Chris, he said, you never loved the dog. I said, but I don't know why, but why I'm feeling this. But I asked God one day, I was actually getting ready for, to study. I said, God, take this pain from me, God. I know maybe this is normal for me to mourn this dog. <laughs> After seven years, it's normal. So I almost, almost fell into that normal thing. And I said, but Lord, and then I couldn't sleep. I just couldn't sleep, Pastor Christine, I couldn't sleep. I said, dear Lord, God, what's going on? Right? If 
finally our prayer, Pastor Christine, our prayer was, Father, we didn't consult you by getting rid of Trixie. That's the hurt. That's why I'm hurting. Not because of the dog, because I disobeyed you. And then I said, Father, forgive me. I've sinned. My fault. Nobody else. My fault. I've sinned. Lord, whatever, wherever Trixie's at, take care of her, Lord. If it's, Lord, I really want her back. And I thought about calling this lady up, but I felt bad that I gave it to her. And then we got a call from the health where the dog department is that they found Trixie. That a woman brought at an animal shelter, that a woman found Trixie and turned her in. And I heard from my office, Pastor Christine talked to the animal shelter, and I, I ran to her. I said, we're going right now, man. I mean, I, we were not even dressed. I just took off with some sandals, man, took off. We got down there, and there's Trixie. I said, I'm so sorry. Lady walks in, and she's so embarrassed because we had told this lady that, you know, if it doesn't work out with Trixie, please bring her back. Well, she didn't like Trixie. So she turned her in to the, this animal clinic. And Trixie is ready to come home tomorrow morning. They're gonna, they're gonna, she's got all her shots, but she's never been fixed, so they're gonna fix her free. We're gonna go pick her up tomorrow morning. Now let me tell you something, let me tell you before I go on, let me, let me see. See, I messed up. Now that told me if I can mess up like that, how many more mess ups can I make? How many more mess ups have you made and are justifying it? So I almost try to justify it. Well, Lord, it's probably normal. I'm supposed to mourn. You know what it was? My emotions got in the way for judging how to get rid of Trixie. Now, Trixie had a lot of pups, so we had to get rid of a lot of pups. So we did put all these pups on, on Craigslist. So we got excited. Let's put Trixie on Craigslist. <laughs> and that's what we did. But I remember when Trixie was going, she looked at me like, they're not doing this to me. And I should have heard from the Lord. I repented. I repented. I repented. I kneeled by my bed and cried. I said, Father, I'll never make a decision based on emotions. I'll pray about everything. I'll pray about tricks. I'll pray about everything, everything. See what I'm telling you? See what I'm doing? It, it, it can be easily said that we can stay with the knowledge of the word. And God will show us things. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. Let this mind be in you, which was also in Jesus Christ. Let's don't make decisions based on our emotions, our flesh, or what we think. Let's get in the Word of God. Let's pray in the Holy Ghost. Let's have the mind of the Lord. Let's break those tendencies, those DNA things that are out there. Come on, church. We got to break those things. We got to break those things. Hallelujah. Amen. We got to break those things. In other words, we got to renew our mind. He's pleading with us. Renew your mind. Verse 2. Renew your mind that you may prove what is acceptable in the will of God. Renew your mind. Renew your mind. Say with me, I renew my mind. Amen. Go with me to James and I'm going to close right now. Hallelujah. Amen. Amen. I'm excited. I'm excited. See, it's the word of God that, that strengthens us. Would you say that's a miracle? Yes. yes. Would you say that, that was a spiritual miracle that God did? Amen? See, that's what God said in his word. I told my wife, you know, God loves me. I told her, God loves me. Because he knew I made a mess. And then he turned it around because of love. Amen? James, the first chapter. It's my fault. I take full responsibility. Amen? First chapter, verse 22. Verse 22. But be doers of the word, be doers of the word, and not hearers only, deceiving your own selves. For if any be a do hearer of the word and not a doer, he is like unto a man beholding his natural face in a glass. 
for he beholds himself and goeth his way straightway forth what manner of man he was. So in other words, very simple. He forgets who he is if he's not in the word of God. He forgets who he is. Amen? Let me ask you, how far is your nose from your mouth in centimeters or inches? Has anybody ever measured their nose from their upper lip? Tell me how, 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 how wide your head is from ear to ear. Tell me. See, you know what size foot you wear. You know what size foot your, your foot, you know what size your foot is so you can buy shoes. You know how wide your waist is. You know how long your pants are. You know how the shirt. But you never think about your head. You don't know. Why? We don't think about our head. We think about our shoes and our pants, our waist, but our head. That means you're not thinking. If you're not thinking about your head, that means in your head is a brain that needs to be attention, paid attention to. You need your brain. You need to know more about your head. You need to know more what's going in your ears, your eyes, ears, <laughs> eyes. You need to know what's going into your ears. You need to know what's coming out of your mouth. You see what I'm saying? That's what we do here by renewing the word of God. Stay in the word. Be a doer of the word. Not a hearer owner, but a doer. Just don't hear. Don't go home here and say, I heard the word. I heard the word. Now I'm telling you, do it. Do it. Just do it. Do it. And you'll see God working. Amen. Amen. Let's go ahead and bow our heads right where you're at. Father, in Jesus' name, we heard the word that is so powerful to change our mind. Thank you for the word that changes us. Thank you for the word that delivers us. Father, we take the word of God today. And we grow by it. Oh God, help us grow every day. 